Good morning. It's Sunday, January 24th, and we're here at SpaceX's headquarters in Hawthorne, California. You're looking at a live view of Falcon 9 as it awaits its 10 a.m. Eastern time launch from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. My name is Andy Tran, and I'm a production supervisor here at SpaceX. Welcome to the webcast for SpaceX's Transporter One mission. It's our first dedicated SmallSat rideshare program launch and third launch of 2021. If you just joined us, if you joined us yesterday, you know we scrubbed for weather specifically for the surface electricity field rule. Today's weather has also been a bit challenging, but we're currently looking good for our T0 liftoff time. On board this mission are 133 commercial and government spacecraft, in addition to 10 Starlink satellites, the most spacecraft ever deployed on a single mission. This count includes CubeSats, microsats, and two orbital transfer vehicles, sometimes called space tugs, which will deploy their spacecraft after separating from Falcon 9. SpaceX created the SmallSat rideshare program to provide small satellite operators with competitive pricing, increased flight opportunities, flexibility, and most importantly, a ride to space on SpaceX's Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, as well as Starship in the not too distant future. For more details on our rideshare program or to reserve your spot, head over to our website at spacex.com slash rideshare. Now let's take a look at Falcon 9 out on the pad at the Cape. Falcon 9's in startup. And the vehicle is in startup. Both stages are beginning to pressurize for launch. In a few seconds here, we should be hearing the launch director give the final go for liftoff. LD on countdown one, go for launch. And there you heard it. That is the final go for launch at T minus 35 seconds. All systems are go for the Transporter 1 mission. Let's listen and watch in as we lift off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in seconds. Florida. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition and lift off. Two bolts pitching downrange. Stage one chamber pressure is nominal. plus 43 seconds into flight. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower and is currently throttling down to prepare for max Q at around the T plus one minute and 12 second mark. Max Q is where the vehicle will experience the highest amount of aerodynamic pressures. Falcon, Falcon 9 is supersonic. Max Q. And we've just passed Max Q. That is a really cool tracking shot of Falcon 9. All is looking good with the Stage 1 trajectory. Uh, in about a minute, we have three events coming up in quick succession. First up is main engine cutoff. That's where the nine engines on the first stage will shut off, followed by stage separation, where the first and second stages will separate from one another. Uh, shortly after that, we'll have a second engine start one. The Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite its engine and continue its journey into orbit. And vac engine chill has begun. We're about 20 seconds away from main engine cutoff, the start of those three events happening in rapid succession. Main engine cutoff. Stage 
stage separation confirmed. Coming up in a few seconds, we should have the fairing deploy. In back ignition. Bearing separation confirmed. And there you can see the two fairing halves have separated and fallen away from the vehicle, exposing the 143 spacecraft to the vacuum of space. And as a reminder, our recovery vessel, Miss Chief, will be attempting to recover the fairing halves today from the water. And as, as we get closer to uh, the Earth, you'll start to notice those honeycomb-like structures on the left-hand side of your screen start to move and pivot. Those are, are, are our hypersonic grid fins, and those help to steer the first stage back um, as it uh, returns back to Earth. As for the second stage, and back performance looks nominal. Just a few seconds after we finish the stage one entry burn, we'll be shutting off the second stage Merlin vacuum engine and enter a small coast phase. Again, we'll need to relight this engine later on in the mission to get to our eventual destination in orbit. Stage one FTS is saved. We are about 45 seconds away from that stage one entry burn. Uh, for the entry burn, it is a three engine burn. So three of the nine Merlin engines on the first stage will relight and start to slow the stage down before it hits the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one entry burn startup. And there is the entry burn. Three of the nine Merlin engines have relit. This burn is expected to last for about 30 seconds. Second stage in terminal guidance. Stage one entry burn shut down. And you can see on screen the entry burn has concluded. And in just a few seconds, we should be here on the call up for a second engine cutoff, where we'll shut down the second stage MVAC engine. FDS is saved. There's the second stage. Also signal stage one, Cape Pico. expected. And we did get confirmation of the second stage that it did reach a good parking orbit. Stage one landing leg deploy. LOS stage two, Cape Canaveral expected. And Falcon 9 returns safely once again. That is the fifth time for this particular booster and the 73rd recovery of an orbital class rocket. A uh, great way to start off the mission and a great way to start off the Sunday. We're now going to coast for the next 45 minutes or so while we wait for SES-2 or second engine start number two. We're going to leave you with an animation that shows you where we're at in the coast phase. And we'll see you back here at the T plus 54 minute mark.
Welcome back to the Transporter One mission. If you're just joining us, Falcon 9 lifted off at 10 a.m. Eastern from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, had successful stage separation. We landed our first stage on our drone ship for the fifth time and successfully completed our first second stage burn. On screen right now is a view of the second stage MBAC engine. We are waiting to relight that engine for the second and final burn. Uh, this burn will be a quick one, lasting only two seconds. And we're expecting that burn to start uh, in just a few seconds here. And if we don't have footage of it, we should be able to get confirmation over the, the nets. And there is Second engine start off, uh, start up, and then cut off. Now we're waiting for confirmation of a good orbit on that second stage. Nominal payload orbit insertion. And there's the call out that we want. Uh, that is a confirmation of a good orbit. Next up will be the deployment of our 133 spacecraft on board the mission, which will occur over an 18 minute period. And as a reminder, today's mission is the first dedicated SmallSat rideshare program mission. We created this program to provide small satellite operators with regularly scheduled rides on board Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and in the not too distant future, Starship as well. These missions offer competitive pricing to our customers as well as an increased, uh, as well as increased flight opportunities and flexibility. As part of this program, we're also offering traditional rideshare opportunities on existing low Earth orbit missions and on SpaceX's Starlink missions, which provide launch opportunities about once a month. The first of those deployments should be happening around the T plus 58 minute and 30 second mark. There is a view of the Transporter 1 payload containing all 143 spacecraft. For today's ride shares, there are 11 ports on our payload, payload, payload adapter responsible for sending 133 spacecraft plus our 10 Starlink satellites uh, into orbit. Some of these ports will have multiple deployments. Uh, for these, over the countdown nets, we'll hear callouts for when the deployment sequence has begun and another callout for when the deployment sequence has completed. There are also then a handful of ports that will deploy only once, and we'll try to let you know who the customer is for each deployment, along with how many spacecraft are being sent into space. We're just over a minute away from the first set of deployments. Due to the nature of the payload stack, we will not have visuals for every deployment, but we do hope to catch most of them with our two camera views. It's also worth noting that uh, we will lose access to ground station coverage for a short a period during the 18 minute deployment sequence. And when we, when we reach that point, we'll let you know uh, over the webcast. First up, the deployment sequences for port C4 and C1 will be initiated at the T plus 58 minute and 30 second mark. On port C4, there are 36 planet super doves, and then there are 17 spacecraft aboard Kepler's port on port C1. And we're hoping to get... Port C4 and C1 deployment sequences initiated. 
those call outs. The deployment sequence has started for 36 of Planet's Super Doves on port C4, as well as the 17 spacecraft aboard Kepler's port on C1. Uh, we're expecting these deployments to conclude about 11 minutes from now. Uh, in just a few seconds, we should be starting up the deployment for our customer Maverick, which contains three CubeSats for NASA's small spacecraft technology programs, VR3X mission. It's going to be deploying from the aft end fuel dome, which essentially is a small platform mounted on the back end of the second stage fuel dome, right above the MVAC engine. Aft end payload deployed. And there you heard the call outs. Three CubeSats aboard Maverick's Mercury dispenser have deployed. These are for NASA's small spacecraft technologies program, VR3X mission. The next call out will be to start deployment sequence for our customer NanoRacks around the T plus one hour and eight minute mark. And while we wait for this deployment sequence to begin, we're gonna leave you with views of the deployments for Planet and Kepler. And we'll see you back here at the T plus one hour and seven minute mark. webcast for Transporter 1, SpaceX's first dedicated SmallSat rideshare program mission. On board this mission are 143 spacecraft, the most spacecraft ever deployed on a single mission. Uh, if you're just joining us, Falcon 9 had an on-time liftoff at 10 a.m. Eastern from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. It followed a nominal trajectory after liftoff. The first stage landed for the fifth time on our drone ship, of course I still love you, and our second stage had two successful engine burns. So far, the deployment sequence has begun for 36 of Planet's CubeSats, as well as the 17 spacecraft aboard Kepler's port. If you're looking closely at the left half of your screen, you should see them in the background uh, being deployed from the payload. Uh, we're expecting those to be completed around the T plus one hour and nine minute mark. We've also deployed three CubeSats for our customer Maverick. We're now waiting to hear that the deployment sequence has started from port C3 for the nine spacecraft for NanoRack's Ear Ease 1 mission. And while we're waiting for that call out, uh, the white dot on the left hand side of the screen, that is the moon. It's a pretty cool shots of uh, the moon there. And there goes another satellite. Again, we're waiting for um, confirmation from the team for the nine spacecraft for NanoRacks ear sequence initiated. Ease one mission. And there is the confirmation uh, for the nine spacecraft. Uh, we're expecting to get confirmation that these have completed deployment in about eight minutes from now once we pass through our ground station blackout period. So stay tuned for that. Also signal Bangalore as expected. Next up, we're Port expecting C4, to get C1 the confirmation that the 36 of Planet's Super Doves have deployed, as well as the 17 spacecraft aboard Kepler's port. 
and uh, we did get that call out. So far, we've successfully deployed 56 of our 133 SmallSat rideshares today. Nine spacecrafts have started their, their deployment sequence and should wrap up in the next few minutes, leaving another 68 still yet to be initiated. We've now entered that blackout period I mentioned earlier, which means we lose camera views and telemetry. During this time, we are expecting quite a bit of activity, but we won't get confirmation of successful deployments until we regain ground station connectivity around the T plus one hour and 15 minute mark. Uh, here's a preview of what will be happening until uh, we regain that connectivity. Nine spacecraft for NanoRex will complete their deployment sequence. Uh, the first of two ports for our customer ExoLaunch will start and then finish the deploying from port B3. Their second port, B2, will also begin its deploy sequence, but won't be completed until approximately T plus one hour and 16 minutes. ExoLaunch has a total of 30 spacecraft on today's mission. From there, two spacecraft will deploy for our customer Capella from two separate ports. And lastly, Spaceflight Incorporated customer IQPS's satellite will also separate. And while we wait to regain access to ground station coverage in a few minutes, sit back and follow along with our animation that shows you where we're at in the mission. We'll see you back here at the T plus one hour and 15 minute mark. back once again to the Transporter 1 mission. We're in the middle of deploying 133 small sats for commercial and government customers. We're expecting to reconnect with the ground station in just a few seconds, and we should be hearing call-outs for the deployments um, that we didn't see, and these call-outs should be happening back-to-back -back once we reconnect. Uh, during this blackout period, we also were able to recover both fairing halves, um, and they are safely on board our ships. And the callouts for the satellites should be happening around the T plus one hour and one hour, 15 minutes and 50 second mark. Acquisition signal, Cordova. Deployment is confirmed on ports C3, B3, C5, B1, and C6. Port B2 deployment sequence initiated and confirmed. So we did get co some confirmations. We should have some more callouts happening in just a few seconds here, and I'll summarize once all the callouts are done. Port A4 deployment confirmed. Port A2 deployment confirmed. B2 deployment sequence complete. Um, it sounds like we've gotten all the callouts. I'm going to go ahead and recap all the different ports. So from port C3, the Nanorax Ear Ease 1 Missions 9 payloads have deployed. From port B3 and B2, the Exoport 1 spacecraft deployed with two ice eye radar imaging satellites aboard. And Exoport 2 with 28 spacecraft from the DLR ice eye nano avionics swarm and TU Dresden began its deployment. From port C5 and C6, deployed one small sat each for our customer Capella. From port B1, the Spaceflight Incorporated customer's IQPS satellite has also deployed. 
and from port A4, SpaceX uh, Space Flight Incorporated's Sherpa FX-1 spacecraft has deployed with its 13 spacecraft on board. From port B2, the final small sats for Exo launch have now deployed, making for a total of 30 on today's mission. And from port A2, D orbits Pulse mission with its 20 spacecraft on board has also deployed. Uh, and that will conclude the rideshare portion of the mission. With these deployments behind us, we are now going to enter another short coast, fit coast phase before deploying our 10 Starlink satellites. So sit tight, enjoy the music, and we'll be back at the T plus one hour and 30 minute mark. We'll see you then. Welcome back to the webcast for SpaceX's Transporter One mission. If you're just joining us, we are close to the end of today's mission, which launched this morning from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida at 10 a.m. Eastern. We then had two successful ignition ignitions and shutdown of the second stage Merlin vacuum engine, then successful deployment of our 133 spacecraft for our commercial and government customers. We were also able to successfully recover our first stage for a fifth time on our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, and recover both fairing halves from the water. Coming up, we'll have the deployment of our 10 Starlink satellites. It's gonna be the first set of Starlink satellites deployed to a polar orbit, and that should be happening in about 30 seconds. And there's a view of the second stage. That right there is a view of the Starlink satellites to the right-hand side. It looks like we lost a signal on the second stage. Hopefully we can get that back. If we don't have views of the second stage, we should get confirmation via the callouts of deployments of those Starlink satellites. Partial data back from New Hampshire. And there goes the 10 Starlink satellites, the first set to go to a polar orbit. Uh, with that, with those 10, that is 143 spacecraft deployed on a single mission, the most ever. Uh, pretty awesome. Uh, with that said, that will be bringing our webcast to an end. We would like to thank all of our rideshare customers for their support on today's mission. We'd also like to thank the United States Air Force for range support, as well as the Federal Aviation Administration for licensing. Continue to follow us on SpaceX.com for future missions and milestones, as well as our Twitter and Instagram profiles. And if you are excited about what you've seen today and want to join our team, visit SpaceX.com slash careers to learn more about working at SpaceX. Thank you to all of our viewers for your continued support and have a wonderful rest of the day.